I thought we'd start with an experiment today and if you want to follow along at home then you'll need a roll of gaffer tape, bin bags, a sharpie although that's optional, and a track saw. One of the earliest comments I remember getting on the channel once I'd got my track saw was somebody suggesting that I block up the blade change hole to improve dust collection. In this video we're going to look at whether that is true. It seems quite intuitive that it should. After all covering that hole means that more air will be taken from where the dust is being created at the blade than through the hole. When you take a look at the saw more closely you'll find that on the inside of the saw there's a hole that is actually probably bigger and this isn't something that you can get to and cover up just as easily. Now I've always thought the dust collection from this Makita saw has been pretty good even without covering up that hole. I use a Nilfisk vacuum cleaner as my um, dust, main dust extraction tool within the workshop and generally speaking it works quite well. Now the purpose of the hole is pretty straightforward. It allows access to the blade arbor for blade changes. That's really all it's there for. This is a pretty common design across most plunge saws with the exception of the Maffel whose blade cover is designed entirely differently. So the method is going to be quite straightforward. I'll put a fresh bag in my Nilfis vacuum and connect that to the saw. Now we all know that there are certain types of cut that create more dust than others, in particular a trimming cut which is where you just go along and just remove a slither of material along the edge of a board. So we'll make five of those. We'll do that first for the uh, saw without any tape and then we'll put the tape on and then we'll run the tests again and at the end we'll see what we've got in the way of dust on the bench. Now I'm using a bin bag to make all of that um, much easier to see on, on camera. It's a dark blue bag with largely light coloured dust should be pretty easy to see and I'm assuming that the proportion of dust in the air will be relative to the proportion of dust that we see on the bench. So I hope that makes sense and uh, let's get started. Okay, so this is the test without the hole covered. You can see there's quite a lot of dust all along the length of the cut. There's a particularly a large amount of dust that's been ejected in front of the blade uh, forward. I've caught some of it, it's kind of stuck to the plastic here. Some of it's fallen down the back. But you know, overall, compared to no dust extraction at all, that's, uh, that's not too bad. And I would have been quite happy with that. So let's. Uh, clear this up and start again with a clean setup and we'll do it with the dust cover on. Okay, so these are the results um, of the covered blade port. I think there is a bit of a difference in the amount of dust. Some of these larger pieces seem to be um, similar in size 
and quantity to the earlier cut. There's a lot less fine dust, I think. And I think overall, it's hard to quantify, but I actually think that there's a maybe 50% less dust. It's not completely dust free, but with the blade port covered, it does appear to make some difference to the amount of dust appearing on the sheet here. So I think I would tend to agree with the commenter that said that dust collection is improved by covering the blade change port. About 50% less dust, I would say, in this uh, casual test. It's not, from, it's not scientific. Maybe I shouldn't have referred to it as an experiment earlier. But anyway, we've given it a try. Seems to work. Um, of course, you know, with the tape applied, you can happily personalise your tape if you want. However, I have a 3D printer, so uh, I've made myself a little blade change cover. And there we go, achieves the same objective, covers that port up. And for some of you, maybe the tape is enough, but you know, for others, maybe they just want the saw to look nicer. And I think a uh, blade change cover like this uh, certainly does the job. So I'll leave a link in the description of where you can pick these up from, from my website. I've tried all the ones on Thingiverse and in the end I went and designed them from the ground up. Certainly on the Makita SP6000 I've probably got the best fit you can find for the DSP600Z and the others that are in the very similar format. The battery saw I've designed that as well to be a very good fit too. And if you're not a Makita owner, then don't worry, I've not forgotten you either. I've got covers for the DeWalt saw, the Festool TS55, uh, both the old version, the EBQ and the REQ versions, uh, and also the Bosch, the Titan saw, and coming soon will be uh, a cover for the Erbauer saw. Others may come in time uh, as and when I get access to the saws themselves. Okay, so we'll leave it there. I thought that was a really interesting experiment. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. That really does help the channel out, by the way. And I love to have you on board. Click the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of videos that are coming up from the, in the future from me. Um, but for now, from the workshop, cheerio.